Local news about local people. This is Newslink Indiana. Hello, thanks for joining us on NewslinkIndiana.com for Thursday, January 19, 2006. I'm Abby Walton. Identity thieves have found a new way to prey on victims. Newslink Indiana's Laura Warfield explains how to protect yourself. Customers use these cards every day at gas stations and supermarkets to get extra discounts. But who are they actually helping? You just might be surprised. Although it varies by company, these types of cards can carry personal information on their magnetic strips. And according to Indiana State Police, that information could end up in the hands of thieves. They're on door room keys. They're on, uh, you know, value cards. And typically the information that's on those value cards, uh, wherever they might be, is personal information about yourself. One common place for identity thieves to get your information? A gas station. Sergeant Russell recommends that customers use caution when they use gas cards like this. Russell says thieves can rig kiosks or ATM machines that swallow your entire card by inserting a small disk to copy information. The identity thieves will slide these in the receiving port and when you put your card in and pull it out, it copies the magnetic strip information. Russell says the average person's biggest mistake, buying and using many cards, which may seem easier but can be more dangerous. Trading convenience for security is not a good idea. In Red Key, Laura Warfield, Newslink, Indiana. For more information on how to protect yourself from identity theft, log on to our website at newslinkindiana.com. A new study ranks Indiana in the bottom half of all 50 states for public arts funding. Newslink Indiana's Shella Sass has a story. The National Assembly of State Arts Agencies reports Indiana is 35th in the nation for public arts funding. Dorothy Ilgen, executive director of the Indiana Arts Commission, says the arts are very important to the economic and community development. I think a lot of people tend to think of the arts very narrowly as an event you get dressed up and go to, um, but really a lot of the decisions that we make every day are influenced by the arts. About 8,000 arts-related businesses employ more than 50,000 Hoosiers. Arts Place in Portland is the regional partner for the Indiana Arts Commission. Arts Place provides grants, technical assistance, and information to further the arts. Executive Director Eric Rogers says the arts have an impact on the community. Our mission is to uh, nurture the creative spirit through the arts. Obviously, we believe that's important, that life doesn't have a lot of meaning unless you're growing and you're nurturing that, that sense of, of awe and wonder and discovery. And that's what the arts are about. With low funding, Arts Place is using small projects to make big things happen. Like an online newsletter to market the arts to a bigger audience and exhibits by local artists. In Muncie, Shala Sass, Newslink, Indiana. East Central Indiana kindergartners now spend more time in the classroom, and their test scores show it. Newslink Indiana's Michelle Long tells us what's making the difference. At this elementary school in Marion, report cards come out tomorrow, but these kindergarten students don't need to worry, thanks to the success of their all-day kindergarten program that started about two years ago. Our teachers are very much engaged in knowing more about the children, um, being able to gauge which areas they need to focus on for kids and which areas students are not mastering. According to a report released by school officials this month, students who participated in the all-day program last year scored higher in state math, language arts, and writing standards than those from 2004. According to the report, students scored 11% higher in basic number standards and 12% higher in computation. They scored 13% higher in word recognition, fluency, and vocabulary, and 20% higher in listening and speaking skills. Therese Howe, who helped initiate the program when she was curriculum director, says the scores speak for themselves. It's not an inexpensive program, but we feel like it's a tremendous investment, you know, given the results that we've seen already. Howe says the school corporation uses state money to fund the program. In Marion, Michelle Long, Newslink, Indiana. Howe says the program allows students in the program to bond better with the teacher and other students. She expects to see even higher scores in the future. 
Vietnam veterans in Marion could soon have a memorial to call their own. Marion's deputy fire chiefs hope to correct what they consider a mistake. Currently, the Grant County Courthouse features memorials for other foreign wars, such as both World Wars, the Korean War, and the Persian Gulf War, but it doesn't have a memorial for Vietnam. The firefighters want to establish a new monument. Everybody encouraged us to do it because we felt like they never got the respect that they deserved when they came home from Vietnam. The monument would cost about $20,000. It's hoped it will be in place by June 1st when the traveling replica of the Vietnam Memorial Wall comes to town in June. Now here's Joe Thomas with a look at our forecast. And Joe, what is up with the weather? Yesterday, snow. Today, it's in the 50s. Right, we have these troughs that are moving through. They're going to keep on doing that. We have a cold uh, a cool down on the way very shortly. Today was probably the last day you're going to see those 50 degree temperatures for a while. It will stay warm tomorrow, but we are expecting rainy conditions. Today the story was sun in Red Key, Indiana, as you can see out there, but that will be very different from what we see tomorrow. As you can see in tonight's weather notes, we had a high of 54 degrees on Thursday. Then we're expecting another cool down. We have a wet start to this weekend. I'll tell you about in the five day forecast. Finally, some sun. To, um, towards the end of the weekend, but the 50s will be disappearing, so enjoy that while it's lasting. Mostly cloudy conditions tonight, a low around 41. After 1 a.m., we are expecting some sprinkles to move in, which will be the system for tomorrow. Winds out of the southwest from 13 to 16 miles an hour with this system. You can see the warm front that moved through, bringing us those warmer temperatures, and the cold front that will be following it, bringing us the cooler temperatures. Here's a low pressure system that's going to weaken over our area, but still bring us rain. And then a high pressure system out to our west that's going to bring us some sunny skies for the end of our weekend, luckily. As you can see, to, um, excuse me, through the clouds on Thursday as it increases throughout East Central Indiana into Friday morning, the rain band starts to move through. And even into Friday evening, the clouds still remain thick. And then Friday night into Saturday morning, more rain showers continue. And depending on that temperature during Saturday, we might see some scattered flurries with this system. So moving into tomorrow, as you can see, the, uh, excuse me, <laughs> this graphic, 43 degrees in Anderson are overnight lows for tonight, 41 in Marion and Hartford City and Muncie, 42 in Winchester, 43 in Richmond. So still above average for this time of year. Highs tomorrow, still above average again, 48 in Marion, 50 in Muncie. So last time you'll see these temperatures, but we are going to have rainy conditions with these. So a high of 50 degrees tomorrow, still warm showers are likely, a tenth of a quarter of an inch of rain possible, winds out southwest from nine miles an hour. Five day forecast starts off really rocky with that rain and that falling temperature on Friday and into Saturday, a much cooler day on Saturday, starting off with some rain, eventually clearing up with some partly cloudy conditions and then a beautiful day on Sunday, but it will be cooler. So getting back into that winter swing of things, spring is not here yet. We despite what you might think of seeing today's conditions. So. so people definitely have to bring the raincoats out tomorrow and the umbrellas, that sort of thing, and enjoy the last 50 degree weather we've exactly. had for a while. It'll be, rain, it'll be warm, but it's going to rain pretty much all day tomorrow. So. Thanks very much, Joe. Fifth grade students at Westview Elementary School in Muncie are participating in one student's fight for life. NewsLink Indiana's Jennifer Fike shows us how they're helping him make the grade. Rebecca Judy has taught fifth grade for five years. Today's subject, modern language. But one of Judy's students isn't in class today. He is struggling with another subject, a life-threatening one, cancer. We were outside playing football, and me and Terry both jumped up in the air for the ball, and our legs caught and tangled them both on the ground. And his mom took him to the doctor, and he got x-rays, and that that's how they found the tumor. Now a fifth grader, Terry Bennett's battle with cancer keeps him from sitting in the classroom, but he's still involved in the lessons. We go Monday through Thursday for about an hour and 15 minutes, basically working on math and reading. 24 out of 25 members of this fifth grade class are here today. Even though Terry's chair is empty, he's very much a part of this class. Try to imagine him in a seat. And it goes beyond schoolwork. The kids have written letters. We make cards every so often. Um, <clears throat> I've taken pictures of the class to his house. We take pictures, bring pictures of him here to school. And his classmates hope he soon will be. It's not, it's not very fun playing football without him. In Muncie, Jennifer Fike, NewsLink, Indiana. Today, the students made a card for Bennett to help him get through the next day, few days of treatment.
One Blackford County school proves once again it's hip to be fit. Wednesday, Northside Elementary School in Hartford City won the Governor's Fitness Award for the second year in a row. The award is given to only two elementary schools each year across the state. Gym teacher Travis Cole says the purpose of the program is to teach the students about healthy lifestyles and promote continuation in a fitness program. It's like a 12-week session where every week the kids come in, they set a goal at the beginning, and then they progress up toward that goal. Cole says an added bonus of the award, the WNBA's Indiana Fever will host a fitness clinic at the school. And that is NewsLink Indiana. Join us for more local news tomorrow right here.